A hybrid, by definition, is something made of mixed parts. In the case of a hybrid car, those mixed parts refer to the power plant, which is comprised of both a gasoline engine and an electric motor. The gas engine runs on fuel stored in a gas tank. The electric motor runs on electricity stored in a big battery. In a regular hybrid, like the Toyota Prius you see here, the batteries used by the hybrid system are self-recharging, thanks to a small generator that's driven by the gas engine, or in some instances by the rotating action of the wheels of the car. The point is that in a regular hybrid, which you might call a hybrid electric vehicle or HEV, the very act of driving the vehicle around recharges the batteries. Plugging a regular hybrid car in to recharge its batteries is not required or even possible. Still, you get better fuel economy and better performance too. To see that in action, check the video in the link below for a hybrid versus non-hybrid drag race. But let's look at the plug-in hybrid, which you might call a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle or a PHEV. And I'll use one of my favorites to kick things off from Swedish automaker Volvo. This is the XC60, and this particular XC60 has the highest performing power plant currently on offer. It's dubbed the T8 twin engine. The T8 designation indicates that this is the highest performing version of the XC60, and the twin engine designation represents, in Volvo terminology, the plug-in hybrid power plant. That's right, the fastest and most powerful XC60 you can presently buy is also the most fuel efficient since it's a PHEV with 400 horsepower. There are many other PHEV powered vehicles available today, including the Honda Clarity and this special PHEV version of the BMW 5 Series, which is called the BMW 530e. So the plug-in hybrid exists somewhere in the middle ground between gas-powered and fully electric, but more towards the fully electric side of the equation than a standard hybrid of the non-plug-in variety. Like a standard hybrid, PHEVs like this one have a gas engine, a generator that's driven by the gas engine and the vehicle's rotating wheels, and an electric motor and a big battery. But unlike a standard hybrid, PHEVs also have a plug, like this. Here's why. The battery in the PHEV can store much more power than the battery in a regular hybrid. So much, in fact, that the onboard generator can't create enough power on its own to fill the battery completely as you drive. So there's a plug that lets you do that instead by connecting it to a charger like this one, or even just to a standard household power outlet if you like. You can think of a PHEV as being the exact same as a regular hybrid, but with extra battery capacity that's reserved solely for all electric driving. In a regular hybrid without the plug and with much less energy storage capacity from its smaller battery, you can drive in electric only mode for a few moments here and there. In a plug-in hybrid with a battery so big that it needs external power to recharge fully, you're set for a few dozen kilometers of driving at a time, all on electricity, without using any fuel. In this Volvo, you get about 30 kilometers of all-electric driving on a full battery charge. For many Canadians, that's enough to totally get off of gasoline for the daily errands or commute or running around. And once you've used that 30 kilometers up, it turns into a standard hybrid vehicle, using gas and self-generated electricity to keep you driving for hundreds of kilometers more. The Honda Clarity, same idea, different sort of vehicle, and it can go about 70 kilometers on electricity and nearly 600 more if the gas tank is full. The BMW 530e, about 28 kilometers on electric and hundreds more on gas electric hybrid power once that's used up. Common to each? Well, there's nothing for you to do. The switchover is automatic, seamless, and no part of the PHEV operation requires any of your attention. To compare, here's a Jaguar I-PACE. It has a massive battery since it's all electric. You can drive nearly 400 kilometers on electricity with this machine, but since it's an electric vehicle, or EV, there's no gas backup. When the battery is empty, your trip is over and you must recharge. Ditto this Nissan LEAF Plus. It's good for about 363 clicks of all electric motoring, but there's no gasoline backup plan if you need to go further than that. A fully electric vehicle like this is not for everyone, so a PHEV gives you the best of both worlds. An electric car for shorter trips, a hybrid car for longer ones, and remember that you never ever have to plug a PHEV in and wait for it to recharge unless it's convenient for you to do so, since you can always just drive on gas hybrid power if you like. 
With the Volvo, there's virtually no compromise either. Notice the hump in the trunk of the Honda Insight PHEV. It reduces trunk space because the battery sits beneath it. Ditto the 530E, which has a smaller trunk than every other 5 Series to make room for that battery. But in the XC60 T8, the battery is tucked in beneath the vehicle and occupies the same space otherwise used by the drive shaft, which powers the rear axle to enable all-wheel drive. This means no loss of onboard space. There's still all-wheel drive, of course. The rear wheels are driven electrically, which means there's no need for a drive shaft. If you're wondering, a full charge on a PHEV can typically be achieved overnight if you're using a standard power outlet, and if you've got a high output level 2 charger like this one, then that drops to just a few hours, maybe 3 to 5, depending on the car. Notably, it cost me about 1100 Canadian dollars all said to purchase this electric charger and have it installed at home. Your results may vary, and based on hydro rates and fuel prices where I live, in Northern Ontario, driving on electricity costs something like a fifth as much as covering the same distance using gasoline. And remember, in a PHEV, plugging in to recharge is never mandatory. It's this sort of compromise-free approach that helps make this technology more appealing to more shoppers. Not only do you get more power, faster acceleration, dramatically improved throttle response, and a completely noiseless and incredibly smooth electric driving experience, you get all of that with the very strong likelihood that you'll start visiting the gas station a few times a year instead of a few times a month. If you'd like to learn more, head on down to the description below for links to a full review on the Honda Clarity PHEV and BMW 530e PHEV as well. Thanks for watching.